So now we're going to work on what are called Venn diagrams, a way of representing sets. Sets are kind of similar. They're in dealing with logic to truth tables. I want to make that establishment and then move ahead and do some work with sets and Venn diagrams. Here's the story. Uh, Venn diagrams will use overlapping circles. So you might think, you know, the Olympic rings, that can look like it, but they don't all overlap perfectly. We're going to have up to three circles overlapping in a square. So I'm going to set up a Venn diagram. The person who invented it's the last name was Venn. So there we go, capitalize it and so forth. And Venn diagrams represent elements. Elements are portions or parts of a set each belonging within certain fences. And if you think of them as fences and you're taking this picture from above, then everyone is in some fences and maybe outside some fences or whatever. Uh, you, the letter U, will represent the universe. And that's kind of the piece of paper, which is everything. And that would be like, if we establish U, it would look like this, and it would be outside any of the circles I'm about to draw. And that whole piece of paper, if you're on that piece of paper, you're in our universe. So what I want to do is make a JLR setup here using different colors and things that people might have or be. J will be about whether someone's wearing any kind of jacket. Usually I use the people in the classroom that day to represent whether they came in with a jacket that day. In blue, I'll have L, whether or not they wore long pants. This means that you won't have worn long pants if you wore shorts, a skirt, and we could talk about whatever else people have, but long pants, we'll, we'll call that uh, pants, will be defined as anything having two separate legs and clothing below the knee. Okay, and then right-handed. And I'm not worried about somebody being ambidextrous. I'm just gonna say, pick one and stay with what you choose if you're ambidextrous, but right-handedness. So everyone's got a feature to be assessed all three times. The circles are gonna overlap. So I'd have a circle for jackets, and if you brought a jacket in, you're gonna be somewhere in the J circle. When we place you as a dot. Now, blue would be long pants. I need this to overlap with the J circle to allow you to have both. So I'm going to do that twice. And this circle would be capital L. And finally, we're going to come back and we're going to look at people who are right handed. So, people who declare themselves as right handed, they need to overlap all the combinations. We can have red that matches neither J or L. We can have red with just L, red with J and L. And finally, red with just J before we circle back and hit there. Now I'm going to go number these locations. Okay, number one is out here in the universe and is not in any circle. Number two is only green. It's only in the green circle. I'm keeping myself working across. Number three is in green and blue. It's on the right edge of the green circle. It's on the left edge of the blue circle, but it's in both. Number four is only in blue. Number five, I'm going to put down here, red and green. Number six has red, green, and blue. It's in all three circles. Number seven is here. It's inside the red circle. It's inside the blue circle. And number eight, right there. Those are the eight regions that we can have here. If you remember, we had, in the truth tables, we had eight whenever we had three things that could be true or false. Is it true or false you're wearing a jacket? True or false you're wearing long pants? True or false that you're right-handed? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and establish all eight positions here. First thing I'm gonna do is I came up with the jacket. So I'm gonna go with this. If I'm lowercase j, I'm gonna put my j right here, and that's gonna be for jacket. Next I had the long pants, which I'm gonna put a cursive L. That's going to be L, and R is going to be whether or not you're right-handed. This is for the truth table. Now, with the truth table, we have to have eight rows. So we're going to say that underlines that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll put a basement on eight. And here we go. We're going to 
going to build the truth table. I'm going to put all the signs in black so you can clearly see each one. But when we're doing J, we do TF, TF. So you go TF, 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 TF. Because you're either in or you're out, project only, right? Of being in the circle. That's true if you're in, false if you're out. Now we do the L's, which go two at a time. T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F. And this one will we go four at a time. T, 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 F, 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 F. Great. They're all there. My claim is every one of those eight regions is going to align with exactly one of these places. For example, if you're in U, you have no J, no L, and no, I didn't put the red letter R in for the red, but right-handedness also. So what we have here is a person who is not wearing a jacket, not wearing long pants, is not right-handed. That person has false for all three features. This is where number one goes. Number two, we look at J. Yes, it's in J, green. It is not in L, which is blue. It's not in R, which is red. Two is true only for J. So we look for the one that has true for J only and nothing else. So in this order, I need to have a true J with F's up front, and that winds up right here. Now, number three. J is true, L is true, but R is not. It's not in the red. It is in the green and the blue. So number three has false only for R. Number four, just L, none of the other two. The only true is L, the other two are false. So I need to have a false R, and I need a true for L, four is in the blue, so that's true, and I need a false for J, so here's where my fourth one go. All those had false R's. The ones that have true R's are all the next four coming up, all in the red circle, all right-handed people. Number five. We're going to get true. For, we're going to look at number five. For right-handed, true. For J, the jacket, true. It's in both green and red. We don't have any blue, so we don't have L. L is the only false. We find the only false in L. It's right here, number five. Number six is all three are true. Six is in the blue, left corner, left edge. Six is in the green on the right edge, and six is on the top, but all inside there. Six is all of them being true. We'll go up here, first line. Seven, it is blue and it is red. So we want to go blue and red are true. So let's see, we've got blue and red are both true. Those are right here with false for the other one. And we put our seven there. And eighth and last is R is the only true. The other two are false, so we have that right here. So what we have is eight regions representing the eight places that we can have things on our, there are different regions within our Venn diagram, including U, which is not in any circles, but still on the map, right? It's on our piece of paper. All right, what I'd like to do now is get to representing some of the operations that happen we have operations, as you know, we had five operations that we could deal with with this. We had and, we had or, we had the negation. Those all exist in this. We also had the laws that we dealt with and then whether or not the values were equal to each other. Those don't have a place being scored in a Venn diagram. But what we're going to do is if you belong with yes, you're inside of a region. And if you belong with the value being no, you're going to be outside that region. And we'll go through it that way and place everyone that belongs in here. So if you yourself had a place to be here, there's, you have your own three characteristics about your right-handedness, about whether you wore long pants. And what was J? Uh, jacket. And whether you had a jacket. You know where you belong. There's only one row where you belonged on this truth table. There's only one region where you belong. One of those eight is you, the other seven are not. Okay, we're going to get to seeing what we can, can put together with things like and, or, and the negation. Remember for and, you need both to be true if you're going to get true. And for or, you need at least one true to be true. We're going to use that same thing. We're going to use the same symbols, only they won't be sharp.
what I'd like to do is represent a set that lies inside another set. Any subset lies completely within another set. I want to get this one set up for you and what it means is let's say we have left-handed people and then we have people we would have this is our universe of living creatures on earth and that would be our universe and then here we would have P P is that you are a person and then we'll have L which will be a left-handed person. Remember, we're not here for the skeptics to cut apart the argument. When we say someone is left-handed, we mean some person is left-handed, and therefore left-handed people would be a smaller segment of the population. If you're left-handed, you're inside the green circle, and automatically that lies within the black circle. But if you are right-handed and a person, you'll be inside the black circle, but not in the green donut hole. And that's what a subset is here. Left-handed people are a subset of people. What would the skeptic say, just so you're wondering? Well, monkeys can be left-handed. We're not talking about that. We're looking at only having our universe be something like people are the only people that would consider to have major you know, strength in one hand over the other. So that's what a subset will be. And I will now want to put people in nested subsets, and I want to place them in these rings. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to have a big universe, literally the universe, Although people who love space and astronomy might correct me on this, and I'll take it if that happens. What we want to do is we want to have you will be actually in our universe, which tends to be everything. And then we want to have, hopefully it's green. I could call it Earth. I'm going to call it W for our world and the W from world because I need the E for something else coming up. I know in advance I'm going to need the E for something else. So planet Earth will be that. Now we're going to go inside there. We're going to have E. And that's going to be a resident of Europe. We're not going to worry about citizenship. That gets to be a, you know sketchy thing for some people like, well, I don't know, is that a, if we're not doing that. Where do you spend the most nights per year going to bed? That's how they define residency. So we'll say a resident of Europe. Now you do need to know some of geography to get this completely right. Within there, we're going to have people that are S. E is blue. E there, people who live in Switzerland. So this would be Swiss residents. I'm thinking of my nephew now, because I don't know if he has, I don't believe he has Swiss citizenship. He lives in Switzerland. He has American citizenship. He has Finnish citizenship, but he doesn't have Swiss citizenship. So he's going to have a spot there because it's residence not about who has what citizenship. And finally, let's put up in here Zurich. Now that looks like the rings on a tree because they are subsets lying within each other. One completely lies within another. And I want to place these people where they go. What I want to do is have us place the person in the spot that is the smallest circle or ring in which they reside. So we're going to find we have a resident of. It's about where they reside. And I'm going to start us off and say, let's put A in for a resident of Italy. I'll go with lowercase for the individuals. Italian resident, someone who lives in Italy, does not live in Zurich, so it's not going there. It's not live in Switzerland. 
Now we work our way out to here. Italy is in Europe. There's your knowledge of geology, you know, of geography that you got to have. And so we're going to put this person is A, our Italian, is there in Europe, in the world, and in our universe. Next we go for someone who lives in Zurich. Start the middle, they live in Zurich. Yes, let's put B right there. They live in Zurich, they live in Switzerland, they live on Earth, oh, sorry, they live in Europe, they live on our world Earth, and they live in our universe. Let's go for someone from Canada. Knowledge of geography, again, necessary. Math for liberal arts, you're supposed to know this. Okay, Canada, not in Europe, part of North America. Not Zurich, not Switzerland, not Europe, but is on Earth, our world. So there's the Canadian. How about someone from Geneva? Geneva, all right. Where's Geneva? Hopefully with a big enough class, at least one person would say, Geneva's in Switzerland. Others might be surprised, but that's okay. That's what we get with groupthink. Geneva, you don't live in Zurich if you live in Geneva, but you do live in Switzerland, and you plant yourself right there in D. How about someone who is a resident of Mars? Not the town in Pennsylvania, not the company that makes the candy, but the planet Mars, which is not on Earth, not on our world. Be out here. Martians live in our universe, and that's what's going on here. That's what we do with subsets. So I'm going to stop here, and we're going to start up another one with part B from this lecture in just a minute.